OMG, have you heard about the yield curve inversion in process? We're going into recession. The sky is falling. We're all going to lose our jobs. We're all going to lose our homes and we're going to be sleeping on the streets. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt DeFanis. I'm broker owner of Remax Realty Associates with offices in Champaign, Muhammad, and Monticello, Illinois. And yes, I have a freshly forming zit on the tip of my nose uh, in case you're squinting at that. Hey, I actually do want to have a serious conversation with you today about fears of an impending economic recession. This was not even a video that I had intended to make. It only occurred to me just today in the last few hours to have this conversation. And the reason that is, is because I had two different people in a 24 hour period, one yesterday and one today, who approached me expressing concerns about an impending economic recession. One of them is a realtor and was concerned about what that would mean for the housing market and for the industry. And the other person was somebody who was looking at relocating back to the area from a different part of the country. And I tend to be a news junkie and I tend not to keep my head in the sand and I tend not to whistle past a lot of graveyards. And yet this wasn't something that has really been weighing on my mind. And that's mostly because our local economy, our local metro area is really heavily insulated from the normal factors that go into a national economic recession. So if you'll bear with me for a few minutes, I want to have that conversation with you and show you why. I'm going to invite you to nerd out with me for just a few minutes so I can show you the data. So let me start by giving you an overview of our local economy and the employers that drive it. So have a look at this. This is the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation's list of the largest employers in Champaign County. So check this out. No surprise. At number one, the University of Illinois local campus employing right around 14,000 people. As a point of reference, for those of you who are not from here, Champaign County has a current population of 220 to 225,000 people. The metro area, including a couple of surrounding counties, is about 250. So 14,000 jobs at the UIUC campus. Next up, Carl, which is 6,921. That is our region's largest healthcare network. And it really has become a regional healthcare network with a lot of folks driving from around the central and southern parts of the state for healthcare here. Next up, the Champaign Unit 4 Public School District at 1664. Beyond that is Kraft Heinz at 925. The local facility has a large logistics facility as well as being the maker of Kraft Mac and Cheese. Think about that in the context of a recession. And then next up, Christie Clinic, more healthcare, Champaign County Government, Urbana School District, FedEx, more healthcare, community college, then some manufacturing, then some more local government. So that's kind of an interesting list. Cause so think about that for a moment in the in the context of a national recession. In a national recession, the demand for higher education, by far the single biggest economic driver of our local economy. In a national recession, the demand for higher education goes up. That's because people that are graduating high school have a lower propensity to face a, a poor job market and a higher propensity to stay in school and go to college if there's any way for them to afford to do so. And indeed, because I am a hopeless nerd, I was recently cross-referencing decades of local University of Illinois campus enrollment numbers with the, with the years for which we had national economic recessions, uh, going back basically 40 years. And in every single case, the local campus enrollment either held steady or posted very slight increases. And that includes in the face of the recent Great Recession. In fact, the University of Illinois was the only university in the entire state university system that managed to post gains, albeit modest, but posted gains in enrollment all the way through the Great Recession and its aftermath, while every other state university either lost students or came really, really close to going out of business altogether. That gives you an idea of how resilient the biggest driver of our local economy is. Healthcare, of course, has been growing at way beyond the rate of inflation for years and currently shows no signs of being anything other than a growth industry for the foreseeable future. Then you get beyond that to public school districts and Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. What could be more popular in a recession when you're on a budget than Kraft Mac and Cheese? So when you look at what drives our local economy, certainly those big headline players here are going to be very stable in a recession. And when those top headline players are stable in a recession, sure, we may see some much smaller employers that either shrink or go out of business in a national recession. 
But when the primary players in our market are still chugging along, it keeps the rest of our local economy chugging along um, with a pretty low drama fashion. It's really a blessing of being here. Now, I'm a realtor, and so I'm all about housing and all about the housing market and house prices and affordability. So let me tout some really exciting statistics there. So take a look at the National Association of Realtors Housing Affordability Index. The how, and I'm just going to read you the definition, and then we're going to dive into some stats because everyone loves stats. The Housing Affordability Index measures whether or not a typical family earns enough income to qualify for a mortgage loan on a typical home at the national and regional levels based on the most recent price and income data. I should point out that also factored into that affordability are prevailing mortgage rates. So that is baked into that formula as well. So let's click over and show you where we stack up. On that affordability index, a 100 score is the average. A metro area with a score of 100 is absolutely sitting at average level affordability, which means numbers above 100 represent metro areas with better affordability. Metro areas below 100 are less affordable. So these are sorted in alphabetical order. I believe the list is 174 largest metro areas in the United States. So here we are, most recent statistics available, which is the preliminary numbers for all of 2018. On a scale where 100 is average affordability and higher is better, Champaign-Urbana, 271.2. 271.2. And I'll scroll up so you can see what those column headings look like. So there you have it. Now, how does that stack up when you rank it against other metro areas in the country? So that's what this chart does. Champaign-Urbana on a list of most affordable metropolitan areas in the entire United States of America ranks number eight, number eight. And I should also point out at this point that you will have some of those really, really almost hyper affordable metro areas that are hyper affordable because even if the local economy is relatively stable right now, Many of those hyper affordable local marketplaces are places that have seen massive contractions or job losses going back several years, which means that the population has shrunk, which means that there's an excess supply of housing, which means that the price of housing is way low. So on paper, that looks really affordable, but it's because it's an economic wasteland. That's not the case here in Champaign-Urbana. If you were looking at that list, I'll switch back to it if you want to have a look. Decatur is an example of, a, of an industrial community that lost tons of jobs and tons of population in recent decades. It is stable now, as those numbers would indicate going across its row. Springfield, um, also a company town, except its company is the state of Illinois government. Springfield suffered some setbacks when the state government moved a lot of those government jobs to the Chicago area, and Springfield uh, lost not only jobs, but also the number of people that came to Springfield uh, to stay in hotels. Peoria, former world, long time, former world headquarters of Caterpillar. Caterpillar relocated its world headquarters out of the city of Peoria, along with some tiers of top level executives. So it continues to be a big employer, but it has seen some setbacks there. So you have some of that as the backstory in other metro areas. There is no such um, backstory of any economic contraction here. In fact, to give you some context, the University of Illinois, as I said, I've been nerding out going through decades of U of I enrollment statistics. When I graduated undergrad at the U of I in 1998, the enrollment that academic year just in the local campus, including undergrads and grad students, was just over 36,000. For the current school year, as of fall semester 2019, the local campus has an enrollment in excess of 51,000. That is a huge percent increase, but obviously it was over the course of 21 years. So what that really tells the story of is not a massive overnight increase, but a continuous slow and steady increase. It's also been well publicized that the University of Illinois continues to have plans for an ongoing slow, steady growth trajectory. So that is not something that is gonna be leveling out and certainly not contracting in the foreseeable future. So when you add all of that up, and you combine it with things like relatively affordable um, new home construction, availability of land, and numerous really great subdivisions. You look at the overwhelming majority of our metro area population has commuting times of under 20 minutes. Um, and we're only two hours from being in the middle of the city of Chicago. 
That's only an hour longer than it takes people that live in Chicagoland to get to the middle of the city of Chicago. We really have an extraordinary, almost economic oasis. And I don't want to sound like I'm being um, completely unrealistic, but we really are something of an economic oasis here in the Champaign-Urbana metropolitan area. So as you continue to process news stories and speculation about an impending national recession, and we will have one at some point, Keep in mind that that typically does not translate into anywhere near those same sorts of doomsday scenarios locally. Our local economy tends to do at least fine in a typical recession and in many of those recessions has actually done very, very well. Of course, if you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave your comments below or reach out to me individually. Thank you so much for nerding out with me for a few minutes and for watching.